Hi everyone, just wanted to make a video of what I've done so far on my DIY CNC machine. Got some parts from China that I imported, some motors, stepper motors, these are the 1600 ounce ones, and myself some motor controllers, got obviously the board that came for free, which actually does work, and then got myself the power supplies to actually run the boards, and then my old computer power supply to give me the 5 volts that's required and the 12 volts. So what I did is, as you can see, I took an old piece, well, <laughs> a new case to be quite fair, and I've converted that now to hold my stepper motor uh, components, not the stepper motors obviously, um, and that's it. So let me just go through some of the things that <sighs> took me all night to get sorted out. So this is that obviously uh, really cheap Chinese board that everyone's been asking how the hell does it work. So let's go through it very quickly. Obviously we have a parallel port that goes in over there. We have a plus 5 and a minus 5. The little pins, the jumper pins there. We don't need to do anything with those. Just leave them as they come. You don't need an additional plus and minus 5. That's isolated because of the jumpers. It's no longer isolated. It sort of bridges them. Then <clears throat> what I have over here is you have uh, port uh, P2, P3, P4, P5 and so on it goes. And these are the ones that you actually connect to your motor your controller for the motor which are these cables that i've got over here what i did is i was using two three to try and get them to work but for some obscure reason it wouldn't work so i just moved them from three and four and then it works so i have no idea why p2 is not working um to be quite honest i don't really care i don't need that i only need four motors to run the machine that i'm going to be building then down the bottom here these are the input and one of the main inputs is uh that we're going to be using is p10 which is the input for the emergency stop and then i've got to connect it to ground and what i have here is i have a continuous connection which is the way i've set it up so that it doesn't give me that error so um give me an emergency error and you'll hear a lot of people saying this is the safest way to do it what it effectively means if there's a break in the cable here i get my error when i set my switches up my home switch as soon as it touches the home switch and there's a break in that home switch when it touches it and it breaks open the circuit it gives me the error and then it knows that it's reached home or that it's met or that it's got to the limit what that means is with the gantry moving around if there's any break or wire comes loose, it'll give you an error and then you need to troubleshoot and find. So that's how you do it and it's set up in the software. I'll do a video about that later. Uh, in terms of the power supply, I've got a 400 watt power supply, which is a bit of overkill here. <clears throat> and as you can see, I've taken just one of the, the, obviously the red is the plus five volts and I've got it connected to where the plus five volts need to be. And I've got them bridged. As you can see, it goes from the one side to the other side and then across and then it goes across. That's what you need to do for the motors to work. Then at the bottom here, there is, if I can find the thing. Okay, so to actually start a power supply, you have to take the green cable and earth it with the black earth. What that does, it allows you when you switch the power supply on, that the power supply actually comes on. So when I turn it on now, there's no power. Give me a second. Oh, let's just turn the power on here. Okay, the power is now on. And as you can see, it's just come on, pass the pass now running, and my little board LEDs just come on. And as you can see, I've also got the fans running, keeping the case nice and cool. I've actually got three fans in here, one at the top, one at the back, and then I've got one at the front here to spin that up. And as you can see also, I have the 220 volts, which is connected at the back here. And that looks like a bit of a mess, but I've done quite a good job inside. I've soldered these together, or soldered, as you say it in America. I've then uh, insulation taped it and then I used some of that heat shield insulation on the inside. And the reason I've got two is I've got the one running to run this pass, this power supply and then I've, as you can see I've got little valve wires there which I wouldn't touch to another power supply that I'm going to put over here. Um, and then I've got a cable running at the top here all the way down. There it is there. And that feeds the two down the bottom here. Again these are things you want shouldn't be touching. I'm just going to turn it off. Um, but as you can see there, my little lights have come on. There is power to them. So let me just turn this off very quickly. Then what I've got here is these are the motors. Um, I came, they came with some instructions from it, but it's basically red, green for mine. Red, green, yellow, and blue is what you would connect to 
you can see at the top there, it's effectively A plus A minus, B plus B minus. I will show you later on how you can actually determine that with a multimeter without having, if you don't have the instructions um, from the guys overseas. I've also, if you've got the same as mine, I've also done the dip switches there. You'll see, and this is what was sent uh, in the instructions, but just so that you can have a clear look if you need to know what the dip switch should look like. So I've got five off, which so pins one, two, three are the pins for the voltage, for the amperage. Four is, uh, they refer to it as half amp. I'm not really sure what that means. Five, six, seven, and eight is actually then the speed that we're running at. And it's got a little bit on the side here that tells you what it is. 1,600, which is what the recommendation of it, um, again, from the supplier was. Some of the things that frustrated the living but Jesus out of me was the fact that when I loaded up the software, Mac 3 is what I'm using. I tried to do it using Windows 8. That didn't work. And I was using 64-bit. That worked even less well. So I ended up installing Windows 7 eventually at 32-bit. And after lots of playing and tinkering around it, ended up working. Um, I really did struggle to get some of the stuff done. But I'll do a picture on uh, that um, at a later date in terms of what I did on my Mac software to get it to work. But this is a basic setup on how the motors will be running. I will set these up and show you guys the motors at some point. I want to actually just look at the back here and I want to mount the motor wires from inside. I want to move it to the outside where it's easily plug and play where I can actually mark the different types of motors that are, that, that are going to be there. So I'm going to have two for my X one for my Y and one for the Z. That's why I need a new or another motor and another controller because I'm going to do a smaller motor for my Z. I don't think I need such a big one, to be quite honest. It's a little bit overkill. It weighs five kilos. It just adds to the weight of everything, which I'm going to try and keep down. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this was a help. Cheers, bye.